Okay, so in this in this uh, video, we're going to go over the Monty Hall problem, just like we did in the previous video. Uh, for those of you that are only going to watch this video, I'll just quickly set up the problem again, but I'll do it really quickly. So there's a, a um, game show where you have a contestant, let's call him Bob, and a, and a host, let's call him Monty Hall. And there's a car behind one of these three doors, but we don't know which one has the car. Okay. Now, um, the, 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 the game goes that the contestants, Bob, will start by picking a door. So in this case, he's pointed to the first door. And then Monty Hall's going to walk his ass over to the next two doors and choose to open one of them. The one he's going to open definitely will not have a car because Monty Hall would lose his job. So uh, now what's going to be left in every single scenario is going to be Bob kind of seeing this, where there's an empty door, there's the door he picked, and the door that Monty Hall didn't open, and he's going to have the choice. And Monty Hall's going to tell him, Bob, would you like to stick with the initial choice, or would you like to switch? And we're going to roll some like music that's really all tense and shit, and, and he'll have to make a choice. Now... The truth is, and I've gone over this in the other video, that the best strategy is always to switch. And that, that's going to yield um, a probability of winning of about two-thirds. Uh, now, uh, I went out and I proved that, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different manner here, which uses Bayes' theorem. Now, Bayesian... Uh, probabilities and updating priors and all that stuff is super important in many, 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 many applications, and it's being used more and more, so uh, I thought it was important to kind of uh, go over this fundamental and uh, famous problem in a Bayesian kind of way. Okay, so to do that, you start off, I'm starting off by denoting two of these events, one uh, CX and the other OX, and CX stands for the car is behind door X, and OX is the host opens door X, okay? And so, let's assume that the contestant is going to pick the first uh, door, okay? So without loss of generality, suppose the contestant picks door one. So that means that we could re we, we could take this argument and redo it for door the, the contestant picking door two and nothing would really change. It would just be um, you know a relabeling problem and, and so it would be a waste of time to do it again. Okay. So next up we have these probabilities. So what is the probability CX? Well, what is C1? C1 is the car behind door one. So our prior belief is that there is a one-third likelihood that the car is behind door one. There's a one-third likelihood that it's behind door two, and there's a one-third likelihood that it's behind door three, because we don't know. Now, in actual reality, uh, the car is behind one of the doors, and Monty Hall knows it. And so in reality, I mean, you know, one of the door has a car with probability one, and the other two with probability zero. But for Bob, who doesn't know, um, he has this sort of belief that, and, and, and it's, it's reasonable, that there's an equal chance that the car is behind any one of the doors. Okay, so we, usually we call that a Bayesian prior, and so that's going to be one-third. Now, next up, we're, what we have is, um, what is the probability of O2, so the host opens door 2, given he's chosen C1? Uh, sorry, given that the car is behind C1. And what is the probability that the host opens uh, door 2 given uh, the car is behind door 2? And what is the probability that the host opens door 2 given that the car is behind door 3? Now remember, he's chosen door 1. So, 
Uh, now, so let's look at these one at a time. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, probably that he opens door two given that the car is behind door one. So in this case, we have the car being here. Now Monty Hall is going to walk over here, and these don't have cars in them. And so Monty Hall is free to choose whichever one he'd like, and we're going to assume that he's going to do so with equal probability. And in fact, uh, that that is something that you could dispute and say Monty Hall has a preference for opening door two, and if you could show that somehow, maybe you could like change the odds a little. But let's just assume that when given with the when given the choice of opening two or three, and where they're both empty, he's going to pick them with equal likelihood. So the probability of him opening do uh, door two, given the car is behind door one, is going to be a half. What's the likelihood of him opening door uh, three? given, uh, sorry, opening door two, given the car is behind door two. So in this case, we have that the car is here. Remember, we've chosen this one. And Monty Hall walks over, and he's definitely not going to open that door. He's not going to open O2 because, uh, he's not going to open door two because that would show the car and Monty Hall would lose his job. So therefore, the probability of the host opening door two, given the car is behind door two, is zero. Okay, so what's the probability of the, the, the host opening uh, door two, given that the car is behind door three? Okay, so now, again, in this case, the car is here. We've chosen this one. Monty Hall's going to walk over here. Now the car is behind door three, and what's the likelihood that he's going to open door two? It's one, because again, Monty Hall wants to keep his job because his job pays a lot of money and he's got a lot of expenses. And so therefore, the probability of him opening the door with the car is zero because he needs to expose an empty door and he'll open this one. And so that'll happen with probability one. So... Uh, if the if you know under the situation where the player has chosen you know uh, car he's chosen the first door the probability that the host opens door two if the you know given the prize is uh, behind uh, door three is one because he can only open one you know door two or door three because he can't open the one that the player chose and uh, we know that the prize is behind uh, door three, so he can't open that one. The only one he can open is door two. Okay, great. So now what we can do is actually use this stuff and uh, use something called Bayes' theorem. Okay, so... Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, is, is calculate the denominator for Bayes' theorem. Okay, so the denominator is going to be uh, the sum from i equals 1 to 3 of the probability of, uh, of uh, the host opening uh, you know, door 2 given that the car is behind door i times the probability of uh, the car being behind door i. And so that works out to be one half. Now, uh, I don't know if I've stated Bayes' theorem, but uh, if not, I will uh, after. Okay, so in this case here, uh, okay, so yeah, so this is, this is Bayes' theorem. So this is an application of Bayes' theorem. So with Bayes' theorem, what you're doing is you're kind of using you're using two concepts. One, you're kind of, um, you're, you're, you're using a partition to split up the sample uh, space. You're using the condition, the definition of, con uh, of conditional probability twice to flip the condition. And uh, so combining those two, you get this formula that says the probability that the car 
is behind door one given the host open door two is equal to and then this statement here which is the probability that the host opens door two given the car is behind door one times the probability that the car is behind door one divided by this denominator that we calculated Okay, great. So you can repeat that for each of the each of the three doors. So, uh, you know, it, so what's the probability that the car is behind door one given the host open door two? What's the probability that the car is behind door two given uh, the host open door two? And what's the probability that the car is behind door three given the host open uh, door two? And these work out if you do the sum um, and, and, and calculate these probabilities in the ways that I've already done up here um, is going to just be um, one third for the probability that the car is behind door one given uh, the host opens door two and here for uh, the car being behind door two given the host opens door two it's going to be zero because he's opened door two and there's no goddamn car there so obviously that's zero and uh, what's the probability that the car is behind three given he's open two it's going to be two thirds and so essentially what this is doing is it's a reflection of a new belief in the likelihood of the car uh, being behind the doors, which is updated uh, by the actions of the host. So the host has come over and he's opened, let's say, door two, and that's given you some information. And that information changes your prior belief that they're equally likely. And the formal way of carrying out that calculation is as described here, but the way of understanding it is uh, you have a prior belief, which is that it's equally likely to be anywhere, but then once the host opens one of the doors, you have a new information that you can take into account. Now, there's a way of demonstrating this. Now, it's, it's maybe not necessarily clear that the Monty Hall is giving you all that much information. And so what I'm going to do is really create an example that's going to uh, completely convince you that Monty Hall is, in fact, giving you quite a bit of information. So, first of all, this should convince you because the probabilities actually work out. But now suppose instead of there being three doors, let's say there are a thousand doors. So one, two, three, all the way up to a thousand. Okay, now Bob is still here and he's still chosen door one and Monty Hall is still here and he's still gonna go over. But instead of opening just one door, Monty Hall is going to open every door. So uh, initially, we don't know. So this is the initial state where we have no idea. But then what Monty Hall is going to do is he's going to come over and open every single door except for, let's say, door 1000. Okay. So then you think to yourself, has Monty Hall actually given you a clue as to which one has the door? Hell, uh, sorry, which one has the car? Hell yes. Because what's more likely that you got it right on your first guess out of a thousand? Or is it more likely that Monty Hall couldn't open door a thousand? because there's a car behind it. I'll let you think about that for a bit, but this essentially should convince you that information is essentially being conveyed to you by the opening of the door. And so the Bayesian way of updating your uh, prior, which is a third, is to uh, 
use Bayes' theorem, which you see three applications of here, uh, which give you your updated probabilities, okay? And so, uh, essentially, um, switching, in this case, um, would be associated with this probability, because um, he's opened two, and so switching would mean you'd have to switch to three. And so uh, that's why, that's one of the reasons why it's two-thirds probability that, uh, that the switching is going to lead to winning a car. So hopefully this has been informative and that I've 